Okay, so as you can see here, I've filed about the first two inches here. And, and this is not, not, not going to be perfect. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done it, and it's, uh, it's a lot of filing because the teeth are so shallow. You can see right there that I've stopped right in here somewhere. You can see the flat jointed teeth, how inconsistent they are. But what we're trying to do... The, the, that's why it's so important to have light. The way I have light, the way I have the light set up in the shop, is specifically for crosscut saw filing. The light refracting off of those flat spots, which is really hard to demonstrate. So when we're filing, you continue to you put your file in the gullet there. You file down until that flat spot comes to a point, until you can no longer see that light. See how that light's refracting off that flat spot. You can see over here that there's no light refracting. And if you feel this with my fingers, it's, these are all sticky sharp. They have a feeling, uh, you know, as Paul Sellers puts it, like a, like a kitten's claw. How sticky it is and how wickedly sharp it is. It's just like that. And normally when a, after a, a, if a file or a saw has been pretty consistent with the teeth, like the next time I file it, I would count these strokes. Would do one, two, three, whatever, and do the same, continue for all of them. But this one, I'm basically kind of recutting these teeth. Um, some take a little more than others. And what my, what cause, when I, what makes me stop, my stopping point is, is when I file those points up to that flat spot, comes right up and disappears. I have the light, I can see the light just go away off that facet and I stop right there. So it's really important to be in a comfortable position what I really, what's so nice about this, to be able to move this around a little bit, is I can move it to, a, to an angle that is really comfortable for me to file, because I want to file consistently, and I want to be able to see that light refracting, so I can bring my work up in here really close and get a nice job on this. And what, when I'm filing, I'm going to be filing straight across, holding my file flat and watching that refraction. This is just the same thing as the same method as you file crosscut saws. And you know the proof is in the eating of the pudding. We'll find out if it cuts. But from what I do know about filing and, and teeth, I think it will. Tedious work this. I, I forgot to mention, I, I did choose to start from the back so that, uh, you know, of course, as I'm learning, you know, the teeth in the back are a little less important than the front. And then I worked it almost all the way to the front and then I, I'm coming back. So I've got just a few more to cut, but I'm overall, I'm really happy with it. One or two little mistakes, but uh, I think it's going to cut really good. We'll find out here in a minute. And again, I'm just light is so critical when doing this that uh, you need to file one spot there. I had a little kind of a damaged tooth, but we'll just go on. Doesn't matter. We'll get it next time. And just filing that down until those facets of light of the flat spots disappear. So I've worked the whole blade and I'm using the way I've got my lights. I'll show you here in a minute. I've got them staggered uh, again for crosscut saw filing. So there's one shining straight down and one in front of me coming at an angle. And that is to get that light bending or bouncing off of those flat spots so I can see them. The old timers in the, that filed the crosscut saws, that was back in the days before incandescent lighting or even power in the remote areas that they worked they actually had uh, skylights. So they would, 
and, and their little saw shacks had a lot of light in them, a lot of windows. So they would have their back uh, typically to a window and then they would have even skylights or glass, glass in the roof where the, it would come down so they could see to file. So what I'm doing by using that light, I'm just um, moving my head around and picking up. I can see just a couple teeth that I didn't file to a point. And I can watch, just watch those get smaller, those facets and smaller until they disappear. And that, like they're gone. I can see one right here. Gone. Gone. Very subtle, but very important. Again, moving my head. I'm gonna order some of those uh, those jeweler goggles. I can see the. Cr There's another one there. I can see the crosscut saw teeth well enough, but these are so tiny. I'm looking, looking, looking. Here's another one. I mean, they're just slivers of light. But if you leave those, I mean, what that means, I mean, if, we, if we looked at that close up in a super macro view, what we'd see is a, a flat, a flat tooth. And we don't want that. We want, we want those teeth to be sharp. And, and I can feel them. I can feel that they're st just sticky sharp. I'm going to look, go over one more time every inch of it. One thing I did find while doing that, that filing took about probably about 45 minutes or so, is that my holding on, my hand started to get pretty tired holding on to the, to the small file. And what I did is I, I make these uh, golf balls. I just drill a hole with a Forstner bit and press in a little bolt so I can use them for file handles like that. They, they, they thread on there. They work really good for file handles. They're the perfect file handle. But what I did is I just drilled a little tiny hole in that that fit that tang in and I was able to use that and push with it and rotate the file inside of it. It worked really good. I, I'll do that every time now. So just kind of a tip might, that might work for you. Okay, let's put this beautiful saw back together. I've got to tell you, good job Germany, Germany on those files. Um, those were some of the finest files I've ever used ever. Uh, wonderful, wonderful files. It's Germany for you. Germany is a byword for quality. Well done. Sad, sad, sad state. The what, uh, what uh, our manufacturing is. Well, it's not completely sad. You know, I mean, there are these little oases of hope in small cottage industries or businesses of of men and women that are producing oh no don't lose that producing some fine fine tools not just in america but all over the all over the world um, but the big companies that we used to be able to you know kind of rely upon um, have really let us down oh what a beautiful saw I was, a, I was a little nervous filing this off for the, my first one, but uh, I have filed enough saws where I, th and I, and I do know that, you know, you, if you do make a mistake on it, if you do really mess it up, you can, you can go back and you can joint, rejoint it and you can reprofile the teeth. It's not at all... Uh, that it's not that big of a deal. So, you know, it's not like crosscut saws where you. I gotta have old Henry Distance. I gotta have his medallion facing the right direction, right? Can't have him upside down. All right, the proof is in the eating of the pudding, right? So this one here was the. Uh, Distin, Veritas, and then the Distin right there. That was the last one we cut with the Distin right there. 
So not this one, not this one. Is it possible for an amateur to sharpen a saw that works? We'll find out here. <laughs> oh, you bet it is. Check it out. Not too bad for a first time, huh? I'm really proud of that. That is that, that's a clean cut right. Let's do another one. That was so fun. Now before, I don't know why. The before the saw got caught in the kerf and it got really tight about this spot, about about that far right there, but let's go let's say we're let's go really soft. It starts easy. Boy, that's really nice. I, I got excited there and I pushed a little hard. Let me, let's go one more time and then we'll try it, try the other one. Look how clean that, look, look how clean it is. That was the, you know, you can see the before and then the three after there, after it was hand sharpened. Now let's take the Veritas. This is a brand new saw. Uh, I never, th these were actually the first cuts I ever used it on. So it's factory sharp, very sharp. Let's see how it cuts compared to the hand sharpened one. It's harder to start. Come on here. Very grabby. Oh, it tore a lot of wood out too. I wasn't doing that on purpose here. Let's go back, just try it one more time. I'll try to be more careful. Okay, so here's the, the Veritas. Good cutter, no doubt, but it did tear, does tear out a bit. Let's try the hand sharp and distant one more time. See how it compares here. I prefer this one. If I was to be honest, I'd have to say that filing or sharpening these fine woodworking saws is something that I, you know, I was a little bit intimidated by. I hadn't really had anyone to show me how to do it, and I didn't want to ruin something or really to destroy a saw that was such a good saw and irreplaceable. A couple mistakes there. You can see right there, I, my eyesight's not real good, and I couldn't see very well, and I thought I was jumping filing this tooth and I and I filed that one twice but that's okay that'll all come out in the wash but overall I think it looks pretty good you know so just some little foibles there you can see there didn't get in that one but I would attribute this mostly to not being able to see very well but you know it's a it's it was my first time oh, there's another one but uh, it cut really well. And it, the thing that I, I guess I really liked about it was it, it started in the wood so easily. But that's pretty good. That's what's so cool about these old saws uh, is that they were made, it was just, that was something that was common for a carpenter to do, would, would be able to sharpen his own tools. They were made to last a guy a lifetime at least. And they cut really good if they're, if they're taken care of. You know, I was just going to share with you here on the, flip side really typical of modern day saws are these very high performance cutting blades at edges here I mean, here's a perfect example from a Japanese silky saw which are probably the finest saws some of the finest saws in the world look at the detail on the way that those teeth are this is a, a very fine a v super fine pruning saw a folding pruning saw um, pocket the po this is the pocket boy here but the the thing with these is is yes they really are wonderful and they cut like nobody's business but they're they're disposable 
And it's such a shame to, I, I, you know, for me, I think I would rather, I'd rather have something that maybe wasn't quite so high performance that, was, that I could service and use myself uh, or sharpen myself that I only had to buy once. It, it's hard to throw these things, you know, it's so, so wasteful, to throw them away, it's just so wasteful. And I wonder sometimes if it's really necessary. Um, they do cut. I'm not, not going to knock that, but I, I don't like the fact that they can't be sharpened. And the replacement blades for these are, they don't give them away either. They're, they're expensive. But that's what's so neat about these old tools. And to, the, to be able to learn how to, to yeah, just, it's just incredible. You know, I think about Dick Bernanke, uh, the guy that w went up and built the cabin up in, up in uh, Alaska. Uh, all with hand tools, you know, everything that he had up there was that he was able to service without having to come into town, you know, with a file and, and sharpening stone, able to continue to keep those things going. That really appeals to me, and I, I think that's why it's so important to, even if you don't use these things all the time, uh, at least have the ability to, to have the tools in place and to be able to to be able to sharpen them and to service them and keep them going. I think that's really neat. So I guess that's it. All right, we'll see you guys on the next video.